Today I'm delighted to be joined by Lindian Resources Managing Director Shannon Green and newly appointed CFO Nick Day. Gentlemen, thanks for joining me in the studio. Thank you for having us, Sarah. Nick, I'll start with you first. So you've been recently appointed to the role of CFO early October. For those new to the Lindian story, can you tell us a little about your background and what drew you to the Lindian opportunity? Look, my background is in uh, finance and uh, exploration and mining. Um, I've had extensive experience in exploration and mining across Africa. So I've been involved in exploration companies and mining companies across Zambia, Botswana, Malawi, Tanzania, Tunisia and Mozambique. Um, so I've been very excited to, to join this pro program and uh, this, uh, this company. I'm um, looking forward to uh, getting involved in the book site in, uh, in Africa. Fantastic. Well, it's certainly an exciting time to join the business. Nick, today we're here to discuss the commentary from BDO and CSA and their analysis of Lindian's recent deal metrics. Nick, if I can, what was the overall summary of these reports? The overall summary is that the independent expert has approved the transaction. It's given a big um, tick in the box there with uh, an unfair but reasonable uh, opinion. So how did the expert come up with an unfair but reasonable summary? There's two elements to it, obviously, the unfair and the, uh, the reasonable. Um, the unfair part of it, um, they've looked at that and what they've um, come up with there is that they looked at the transaction pre, so the share price pre the transaction and the share price post the transaction. And where the share price, the deemed share price that they come up with post transaction is less than the share price pre, they call it unfair. However, they then look at the reasonableness of the transaction and how attractive it is to the, uh, the company, which is detailed in their report. Um, and if, the, if that stacks up, they deem it reasonable and overall a positive um, view for the company. Now, why is the theoretical share price of the company post-transaction deemed lower than pre? There's a number of elements here. So firstly, they look at the valuation of the, uh, of the assets backing that share price, that deemed share price. And that valuation, firstly, they use a, a number of models, and those models um, are based on very subjective attributes. So one of the models they use, for example, is the Kilburn model which is a, a 70s model which uh, has a number of uh, very subjective attributes. Um, so that's come up with a, a fairly low value in the first instance. And then what they do is they take that, um, that value and they discount it further uh, for a placement discount because they look at what um, the uh, uh, placement would be in the future. And placements are usually done at a 10 to 20% discount. And then they've discounted it further for a, a control discount as well. And uh, they've then taken that um, low market value and they've then taken the money that is to be used for the farming, which is US $3 million, and they've worked out how many shares would have to be issued to raise the money for that $3 million. And that then has been used to dilute the share price even further. So you've got uh, a triple whammy effect here, if you like where the share price, the deemed theoretical share price, has been smacked down further and further um, to, to come up with, uh, with this. However, as we say, overall the attributes they see that on the reasonableness side of things, this is very positive for the company. Um, yeah, and, and one of the main positive attributes that they've, that they've seen in the, in, the, uh, in the transaction is Gifford's independent expert report whereby through the geological work that he did during the, the due diligence program, um, himself and the geologists um, have, have determined that, that, that we've actually got a conglomerate bauxite uh, as part of our, our uh, overall uh, project area and which is a very high value product and of course that's obviously very strong in the, in the reasonableness of the transaction. And Nick, you did mention the market control discount. Can you just expand for us what that actually means? Yeah, so uh, because the, uh, one of the parties that uh, is involved on the vendors is Asimwe Kabanga, Asimwe is getting a little bit over 20% of the company, and that's deemed to be control. And because of that, um, they've then used this discount to discount the, uh, the value of those deemed shares further. Yeah, and a placement discount? So usually placements are done at a 10 to 20% discount to the market. And um, because they're using this to come up with the, uh, the number of shares 
to dilute the, uh, the price going forward, yeah. that they've used that discount as well, which is, as I said, has further reduced that post-transaction share price. And you know, in terms of that post-transaction share price, we're expecting a substantial value to be added by this project. So it's a little bit unrealistic to assume that that is going to be the share price in, say, like a year's time. And, th and that's what they're theoretically modelling. But they're just being very conservative, which they have to be, and we totally understand that. But we just don't want to see shareholders getting bent out of joint over this, and that's why we'd like to bring this to their attention. Why, why does the independent expert think that this proposal is reasonable? In their report, they uh, have a number of factors that they've addressed in terms of uh, why they think this is reasonable. Um, firstly, it diversifies risk, mm -hmm. which in any portfolio anybody uh, requires. Secondly, they think that the, the structure of the transaction is very good. So the way that uh, the, this has been structured in a step-by-step -step approach, so we don't blow all of our money in one hit, um, we spend some money and, uh, and if things aren't working out we can withdraw from the project, but if everything's successful we then and, keep on going. And all cash is, is towards establishing and growing value of the asset, so there's not cash going out the door. That's very important. And thirdly, um, key to this is that this is an advanced exploration asset of potential substantial value. Um, and uh, you know, as um, the managing director here has said, uh, the value of this uh, has been ticked off by Mark Gifford, who's um, you know one of the top geologists here in Australia, and um, that asset going forward is going to be incredibly valuable to the company, and they can see that. So the reasonableness of this uh, this transaction is based on those for those three items. And you touched on a few of them there, but are there any further advantages to this transaction? The key advantage um, moving forward now is is obviously. The uh, primary target being the conglomerate bauxite, yep. uh, being such a high grade, low contaminant uh, asset, yep. um, it, it will be quite unique uh, and, it, and its value uh, potentially significant. Lindian has had some announcements this week regarding your Guinea bauxite project. Can you expand on that announcement for us and let us know what's on the horizon for Lindian Resources? Sure. Yeah, so we, we announced that uh, we've, we've now completed the independent expert uh, process. Uh, we've now locked our, our AGM date to the 15th of November, which is fantastic to, to finally finally do that, um, which now gives the shareholders the final piece of the, of the puzzle for the transaction um, and, and the vote. Uh, so that, that was our, our most recent announcement. Prior to that, we announced that we've appointed Sahara uh, Natural Resources as our drilling contractor. They're gearing up. We've had solid communication with them, uh, and they're gearing up and, and ready to go. And we've also uh, uh, now kicked off the um, permitting and, and so forth that's required in the small amount of social work that needs to be done around that. So it's all systems go, and uh, you know, yeah, the fast track drilling program is, is on track. So we're excited. Fantastic. Well, busy times ahead for the team at Lindian. Gentlemen, thank you for your time today and we look forward to more updates from Lindian soon. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you very much, Sarah.